everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.dev. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is build a node um, to-do list using, a, well, with a CLI to-do list. So basically, oftentimes you're constantly trying to build like applications that are like web applications that have a graphical interface or desktop applications, mobile applications. But what I think a lot of times people don't sit down and build and realize that there's a lot of value in is creating CLI applications. Okay, a lot of people create CLI applications as part of frameworks to spin up tools, but what about just simple utilities? And that's sort of the goal here is to maybe um, one, show you how to create one particular app, but also, you know, spark ideas for other cool CLI applications that you might find useful for your day to day life. Now, what is a CLI application? It's a command line interface application, meaning it all does it through the terminal. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna create a to-do list, one that actually saves your, your uh, files to a um, to um, JSON files. So here we go. Uh, we'll just call this uh, to-do or my to-do.js. And I'm not gonna do this with any external libraries. I'm gonna do this purely with like what Node provides you. So um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to uh, const fs equals require fs. So fs is the file system library in um, uh, do, 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 in Node. As you can see, I can just woke up. Okay, so fs, and let me just make sure I'm doing this because I know there's two of them. There's like fs and fs promises. So I just want to make sure I'm thinking about this right. Uh, do, 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 FS promises, FS. Okay, cool. And then here's like the list of functions. This is like the, um, basically there's two versions. There's FS, which is the synchronous version, which means again, one thing finishes and the next thing happens. Then there's the promises version, which is the asynchronous version, which could be really useful when you're writing really, writing and reading really big, large files and don't really want to block your entire program. And to use the FS promises, one would be like FS slash promises but I'm gonna just use the synchronous one where to keep this real simple. Okay, so right there, I have the FS library. Okay, so let's just put some comments in this. I'm importing the FS library to work with the file system. Okay, and next thing I want to do is I wanna check if a file exists, okay, because Things if you try to read and write files that don't exist, you might throw errors. So you want to check if that file exists first. So if okay, that's perfect. Okay, so essentially what we're, I'm doing here is that this is going to check to see if this particular file exists. So what I want to check is todos.json. Okay, and if not, then I want to create the file. If it doesn't exist, which again, that means I should probably do this with an exclamation point here to make sure that not exists. Okay. And then let me just fix that. Create the file. If it doesn't exist. So in that case, we're perfect. Okay. And then essentially what we're doing here is we are writing a file. So we're going to basically create the file to do.json and we're going to create an empty file. And again, this will only happen if it doesn't already exist. Okay, and I can just test this out. At this point, this is actually probably a good time to test because the file does not exist, as you see here. I don't see a to do that JSON. So if I run the file, it should just create the file. Okay, so let me open up a terminal and try that out so far. Okay, so I'll do node uh, my to do.js. Oh, and it worked. See, to do's JSON that got created, and it's just an empty array because it's just going to be hold my array of to do's. Okay. Now, the next thing that should happen is that we should read the file. Okay, so we're going to read the file. And there it goes. Okay, so basically what we're doing is we're going to have our list of to-dos, which we read the file. So we're going to read that JSON file, take that array that's in there, parse it as JSON, creating the JavaScript array or JavaScript object that we're going to save in to-dos, in this case, an array. And now we can work with that. Okay, so that basically I'm loading the data up front. Cool. And uh, that's pretty good. And then what I want to do is I want to parse arguments, parse command line arguments. Okay. 
So the way this is going to happen is, um, now I'm going to do that a little bit differently, but we're going to say const args. Actually, what I would prefer to do is I'm going to say const, we're going to do a ready structuring because again, basically what's going to happen is that generally um, all the command line arguments show up in this array process.argv, arguments vector. Now generally the first two things, um, and actually let me just console log that so you can see what I'm talking about. If I console.log uh, process.argv, you'll see what I mean. But oftentimes the first two things in the array I don't care about. Okay, the first two things in the array, so I'll put two commas to skip those first two things. And then yes, I'm with the second, the, the really the first argument is the third thing in this array. So that's gonna be command. And I'm honestly only gonna be using two arguments. So it's command and we're gonna say input. Okay. And then that's gonna equal argv. You get rid of that closing. Let me just run this again. And you can see when I pass no arguments, see the first two things in the array are like the file path to the node binary that's being used to run the application. And then the second argument is the file path to the file that is being run, which are great if you need those. I don't, what I need is anything afterwards. So for example, if I do my to do and I say cheese bread, so anything after that file name, those are arguments. I see now in that array, I have two more arguments, cheese and bread, okay? Cool, so basically I have the file loaded up and now I can decide what I want to do. So I'm going to use the command argument to determine, okay, what is it that you want to do? Do you want to add a to-do? Do you want to view to-dos? Do you want to delete a to-do? And so forth. Okay. And we'll just do that handling a switch. Okay. So we're going to have a switch. Switch with actions. So we're going to say switch command perfect. And in the first case, we'll have add case add perfect okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the um, um, da, 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 the array which is to do's and then we're going to actually we're going to first create the new to do cons new to do equals an object and then it's going to have to have an ID number okay the ID number it's just going to basically be um, either. Let me think about how, how I want to figure that out. Okay. Um, cool. Let's do it this way. Let's actually write a function for that purpose. Okay. So I'm going to write a function. Function for, for determining ID number. Okay. So function get ID and essentially what's going to do is at first I'm going to check if there's actually anything in the to-do list because if not then the first ID should be one okay so and that's exactly right and if not it should take the ID of the last to do and add one to it and that's exactly what this logic does okay so again if the to-do's length is zero return one and again if not then find what is the newest to do in the list and give me one more from that ID Okay, and then that should give me what I need. Okay, so then I can just use get ID to determine the ID number of the new to do. Okay, the message, okay, is just gonna be whatever the input was. Okay, and then we're just gonna push that in. Okay, so there you go. We're gonna push that into the new to do list and break, that's it. Okay, and then what we'll do is also we'll add a message just so that way you have some sort of feedback console.log to do created cool then we're gonna have a case of view okay which is just gonna console.log to do's okay and try to think how do I want to do that Go and just do it. I might want to, what I might want to do is say to make it just more visually appealing. I might want to just do this for to do or let to do 
of to do's console.table to do. So that way it shows them in a nice table format each to do, which is just going to be a little bit more attractive. Okay. And then that's it. That's all that's going to do. And then we'll have delete a to do. Okay. And then basically what I want, want it to do is I want to find the ID, find the, uh, or the index of the to do with the ID in input. So that will use like the, the find index method exactly like that. Okay. So it's basically we're going to use that find index method to take each to do and check whether it's ID matches the index we passed in the input. And then we will remove the to do from the array, which we'll use splice for just like that. So we're moving one item starting at that particular index. And then we will just send a message console.log to do deleted. And then we do a break. And then that's it. Um, again, uh, actually what we should be doing though, is that after each of these, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write another function to save my to do's. So function for saving to do list, because basically I'm going to need this twice. Every time you add a to do and delete a to do, I should save the list. So instead of writing this logic twice, I'll put it in its own function. Okay, function save to do's, which all I should do is basically uh, stringify the to do list and then write it to the file. Okay, which is exactly what it says does there. So write file sync. Okay, I'm taking that to do list and what it does, it overwrites the file with the updated version of the object. Okay, so now, right after we create the to do, I can do save to do's, that'll update the to do list. And then when I do delete, we can then update the to do list. And uh, yeah, this is done. Okay, this now is done. That's all it took. Okay. So now, if now, so if I go like node my to do's dot js, and I say, oh, my to do dot js, and say I want to add eat, and I'll just say eat breakfast. Okay, CSS to do created. I should probably get rid of that console log there. We don't need that. And then if I take a look at the to do's dot json, and I can see, look, it has my to do. Okay, now if I were to create another to-do, like eat lunch, there it goes. Now I have two to-dos in the list. Now if I want to see them, so I go my to-do, and I click type in view, I can see my to-dos, eat breakfast, message ID, and then I want to mark one of them as done. I want to say, hey, I ate breakfast, so um, node my to-do.js, and, you know, I'll say, you know, uh, delete two. Okay, and now when I do a view, I only have one. Okay, there you go. I have a fully functional like to do list that I've just made that runs right out of my um, that runs right out of my terminal. Okay, it's really easy to maintain and I can uh, it just works. Okay, really, really simple process. So my point is, you can make all sorts of possibilities with this. So just with this makeup alone, uh, just basically having a basic JSON file to track things, to save your data. Um, and if you want to get more sophisticated, you could use something like a SQLite um, to create like a little SQL database on there. Although again, for very simple applications, this JSON uh, approach works pretty well um, until you start, you know, having really, really large amounts of data. But um, yeah, you can create some really nice utilities for, for tracking things. Um, and it can be, you know, a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Hopefully it inspires you to kind of create some CLI applications for your own stuff, which again can also be things you point to uh, as far as your portfolios and whatnot. You can create applications that you share with others um, and also really cool stuff. So my name is Alex Merced uh, from alexmercedcoder.dev. Have a great day and enjoy.